just get some more of that radiator in because Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're well. I've actually sat down to record a different video today, um, but I just realized that I didn't have an intro for the makeup video that you're about to see. So um, I thought I'd just sit down and tell you a little bit about how I chose the makeup and why I chose it um, and also my approach. So very quickly, before we hop into it, as many of you will probably know, I've spoken about it in the past, I'm not great when it comes to DIY makeup. There have been some epic fails from tinted lip balms that just didn't do anything and created chaos in the kitchen. I'm still chipping off bits of wax <laughs> that I keep finding. And DIY mascara has just again been an epic fail. My skills will only stretch so far and when it comes to DIY makeup, I don't have that set of skills, but other people do, and they've made wonderful businesses out of it. So I'd much rather support somebody who is actually good at doing this and can make a living from it. So um, that was kind of an approach that I took to choosing my new makeup kit. For those of you who don't know, I actually lost my entire makeup kit a couple of months ago, and I'm still not sure where or how, but I suspect it was somewhere between Cornwall and London. So keep an eye out. But basically I decided to take it as an opportunity to start afresh. Um, makeup has come a long way in the last couple of years, especially in the zero waste world. There is a lot more available to us with better packaging and brilliant ingredients. So I thought, why not start again and also look at what I wasn't using before. I thought I had a pretty minimal makeup kit, but it turns out I wasn't actually using about half of it. So generally I don't wear a full face of makeup every single day, but there are days when I I think, oh, it'd be nice to wear a bit of makeup today, or if I've got um, a meeting, or if I'm filming, I like to wear some makeup. And I don't think it should be one of those things that we have to completely compromise on and have like no makeup if you're living a zero waste lifestyle. Not everything I've chosen is completely zero waste, but there are certainly things in there that are better packaged and use a lot of minimal packaging. Um, so I will talk you through each product that I've chosen and I'll show you how I use it. Also, I kind of probably bought too many things because I was intrigued and curious to try um, different products to see which ones I would continue to use moving forward. And finally, several of the products do actually come from overseas, I think mostly America. I've kind of struggled to find anything here in the UK, but what I have done is tried to support UK retailers. They will obviously have bought a much larger quantity, it would have taken up more space on either the plane or the ship, so overall it's a bit better, it's not perfect, and as I've said before, I'll say it again, I'm not perfect. <sighs> Shocking, I know. And interestingly, I was reading through, I think, some of Bea Johnson's older blog posts on her um, blog, Zero Waste Home, and even in that, she was saying how makeup was one of the final transitions for her, and it was one of the hardest. And even now, I think it's not perfect in her world. So when I'm looking for alternatives, I'm doing the best that I can in that situation, and it will be a constant evolution. Um, and hey, who knows, maybe one day I will nail DIY mascara, but <laughs> miracles can happen. Also, a quick note on ingredients. Again, as I've said before, I'm kind of very picky when it comes to ingredients in makeup. There are a lot of natural makeup brands out there who have really great packaging, but their ingredients still contain things like titanium dioxide, which is a natural ingredient, but it's been linked to lung issues. I'll put a link in the info box below if you wanna read a little bit more about it. So personally, I try to avoid it. I don't really want that on my body or in my routine on a regular basis. Um, so that's a personal preference. I know lots of people aren't that fussed by it. So by all means, if you find a makeup brand that's packaged better um, and has great natural ingredients, but still has some titanium dioxide, but you're cool with that, then you do your thing. So when it comes to ingredients, I personally look for a lot of organic ingredients and mostly organic if possible. Looking for an organic certification is brilliant, but I know a lot of these makeup brands are um, very small. They probably haven't been certified yet. Um, so I actually go through and look at each individual individual ingredient to see how much organic there is in there. I want it to be 100% natural. I avoid 
things like titanium dioxide and nanoparticles. I also looked for products that were kind of multi-purpose, meaning that I didn't need as many products in my makeup bag. So things that would double up as like a lip stain and a cheek stain or an eyeliner and mascara in one. So um, that was definitely an approach that I took as well as packaging and ingredients. And yeah, just considering what I really use. I basically noticed that I wasn't really wearing eyeshadow anymore. I was kind of over eyeshadow. It happens. So I didn't buy any eyeshadow this time, but I do have an eye call. You'll see it in this video. It's coming up. I'm really teasing you with this, um, that I can use as a kind of smoky eye shadow if I wanna go there. And what else, what else? I think that's pretty much it. So I think that's enough of my waffling. I'm gonna crack on and film another video, probably wearing this exact same outfit, so <laughs> you'll, you'll live. So without further ado, let's hop on into this video. First up, foundation and I found this one by 100% pure I really like them as a brand the ingredients are really good it's 100% natural and it comes packaged in a metal tin so no plastic as far as I can tell the consistency is also really great it's quite thick but not too thick which means it gives good coverage but without leaving much shine so I actually don't need a powder to put on top of it which is one less product to buy it came housed in a cardboard box, which is easily recyclable. There was this tamper seal though, and as far as I can tell, it's made from cornstarch according to their website. Although I do intend to ask them about that to get to the bottom of it. Also, if it is made from cornstarch, it might be from a GMO source. Again, I'm not 100% sure, unintended pun or intended. But I know generally as a company, their approach to packaging is really good. They actually have a take back scheme. If you're based in the US, you can take your empty containers back and they will recycle them properly. I'll put a link in the info box below to their website. There's a page that explains their approach to sustainability, to their ingredients, to their packaging. Uh, so make sure you have a little read of that. I found it really interesting. The foundation goes on really easily. And as I said before, it has a matte finish and has excellent coverage. So I was very impressed. Up next, it's the first of two eyeliner slash mascara products. This one is by Clean Face Cosmetics. I found her on Etsy. Uh, again, she has really great ingredients. It comes in a little metal tin. It did arrive in a kind of padded envelope, so there was a little bit of plastic there. And the lid has a little circle of plastic on the inside, which I didn't realize until a bit later, actually. So I'll show you how I used it as an eyeliner with this angled brush. So I had to buy a whole bunch of new brushes because obviously I'd lost them all in my old makeup kit. V-Long was the brand I chose. I really like that they've got natural bristles and a wooden uh, stem, wooden handle, wooden handle. The only synthetic one I think is the mascara wand. I know natural bristles won't be for everyone, but they certainly align with my own personal values. With this product, I don't need any water. I just work the brush into it a little bit and then start applying it as an eyeliner. Ooh, look at that. Basically, this kind of makeup does take a little bit longer. Think of it like the whole slow food movement. This is slow beauty. So it's definitely a more mindful experience, shall we say. But I think if you allow yourself enough time and with a bit of extra practice as well, I've certainly gotten a lot quicker at doing it. Up next, I'm showing you the same product, but as a mascara. So I'm just using an old mascara wand I had saved from a 100% pure mascara, I think. Um, because it didn't fully fit into the tin, I just worked some product onto the mascara wand with a brush. And I'm doing my best to show you angles in the camera. Guys, I don't have a handheld mirror. <laughs> so this is the best I could do. So for bronzer, I just basically bought some cocoa powder from Bulk in a glass jar. And I've got this brush again, it's by V-Long, it has natural bristles. I really like that all of their brushes have very long handles. Didn't know that was a thing, but I'm a convert now. I really like a long handled makeup brush. So a little really does go a long way with the cocoa powder as bronzer. So I definitely make sure I um, shake the product off the brush before applying it because it can be quite dramatic otherwise. There you go. Looking all sun-kissed and bronzed. 
Okay, so this next product I think might be one of my faves. This is a lip slash cheek tint that comes in a biodegradable cardboard tube and I found it on Etsy. I think the seller is called Herb Apothecary, but I'll link it in the info box below. And basically you just push it up from the bottom, a bit of product comes out and you can work it onto your lips like so. It's very moisturizing and it's a very buildable color. So it starts out quite subtle but then the more you put on, obviously, the more dramatic it looks, and I really like it. This is another lip and cheek stain. I bought both because I was just super intrigued. This one's by Fat and the Moon, and I really like it. It's a slightly deeper color than the previous product, um, and it goes on really well. It comes in a little metal tin, and I found it from a UK retailer. So before I put that on, I'm gonna remove the other one with a little bit of olive oil and an organic cotton cloth. So this one has a little bit more of a gloss or a shine to it. Again, it's super moisturizing and I just think it looks really good. So next I'm using it as a cheek tint, um, just to show you what that's like. Again, it's very buildable and I think it adds a nice natural blush. The tint actually comes from beetroot powder, which is kind of cool. It also tastes really nice as well, which is no bad thing. So this lipstick is the one item from my previous kit that I really, really, really missed. And it's not very zero waste in that it has a bit of plastic on the packaging. So I think that main tube, not the lid, I think the lid's metal, but the tube is definitely plastic. Um, but I just really love the colour. I feel really good whenever I put it on. It's definitely not zero waste, but it's one of those products that I really missed. I really enjoy using and was happy to make a compromise on. It comes in a recyclable cardboard box. And like I said before, 100% pure do use packaging that is recyclable. Oh, I just, I love it. Okay, eyebrow powder, which is something that I've never really used up until last year and I bought a specific eyebrow powder or product, I can't remember what it's called. So this time around, I decided to use the cocoa powder. I'm using one of the brushes again. This is actually the mascara brush, but it works as a kind of eyebrow brush as well. Um, I guess I could use an old toothbrush if I wanted. And then I'm using this tiny little one. Again, this one has natural bristles. And I'm using the cocoa powder, which I used as bronzer not so long ago, um, to fill in my eyebrows. Honestly, I hardly ever use a product on my eyebrows, but occasionally I might want to, and this kind of works. I was really pleased with the results on this, actually. What do you think? And there you go, guys. That is a full face of makeup right there. Now, if I wanted to make this more of an evening look and add a bit of eyeshadow, as I said before, I'm not really into eyeshadows anymore, but I quite like using this product by Fat in the Moon. This is their eye coal, and this can be used as an eyeliner, a mascara, and as an eyeshadow, as you're about to see. So I just used the brush to work the product lightly over my eyelids. And I actually really like how this looked. So I'm removing the eye makeup with the olive oil again and just a cloth, looking a little strange there, but bear with, bear with. And I'm gonna show you some of the other products that I bought. So just giving a more neutral look to my lips there. 
So using a brush and the same eye call I just used as an eyeshadow, this time I'm gonna use it as an eyeliner. And honestly, out of the two, I think the Fat and the Moon eye call is my favorite. I think it is. I love both products and I would highly recommend both of them, but honestly, I don't need both of them. So moving forward, I'm thinking I'm gonna go with the Fat and the Moon eye call. Again, it doesn't need any water, you just work the brush into the product. And then using the mascara wand, I'm just using the same product as a mascara. Hashtag multi-purpose. And this one definitely has a more mascara look to it when it goes on. So the previous Clean Faced Cosmetics version has a much more natural look, whereas this one is definitely more of a pow, eyelashes, yeah. I just think it's really nice. Then I'm just using some of the Fat in the Moon lip and cheek tint on my lips. <laughs> And I realized I forgot to show you what the Herb Apothecary tint looks like as a cheek tint. So I'm just putting some of that on there. It's ever so slightly more subtle than the Fat in the Moon one, but I really like it as a kind of daytime cheek tint. Honestly guys, I'm so happy with all of these products. That is all of the makeup that I bought this time around, and I'm really pleased with it. I'm not pleased with that car outside though. <laughs>